Welcome to No Place Like Home with Mike and Megan Norp, where we believe the center of the universe is your home and our home and every other home on the planet. On this podcast, we talk about anything related to that. Homeschooling, parenting, gardening, home decorating, really anything as long as it has to do with the in-home. today's episode, we're going to talk about how to cultivate a rich home life. Yes, and we're doing it at home, so you are going to hear all I our think, squeaky doors. I think there was a loud noise right in the middle of that thing <laughs> I, I just said. We're recording at home, and we used to do it in our bedroom, which was quieter, but now we record it in the front room because we're recording it visually as well, and so you guys are going to hear our rich home life that we've <laughs> cultivated. Is that what it is? So Megan, what do we mean by a, a rich home life? We're talking about making tons of money and being yes. like super rich and yes. living high We're going to tell you how to um, get abundantly wealthy today. We yes. have an opportunity for you. Yeah. Get in on the ground floor and your home life will become rich. so rich. Dozens like, of dollars. Oh yeah. Is that what they do? This yeah. thing? You have to be if watching. You're not watching. I'm doing like that thing where you're like Th- pushing money off, pushing the money off your hand. Yeah. Which is what I do all the time. He does it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't. Um, yeah, so no, we're talking about, um, well, two things. One, we chose the word cultivation because so often on this podcast, if you haven't watched, maybe it annoys you, but hopefully it doesn't. We use garden analogies, gardening we love analogies. Gardening. And cultivation is something where you're, you know, tilling the soil, soil the soul. Tilling the soul. Now wow. that's something new. I didn't mean to say that, but maybe I did. Whoa. No, but it's where you're you're preparing the soil and then tending and nurturing your plants. And so you cultivating a rich home life is a home. When we say it's the center of the universe, um, you can actually have a home that doesn't excite you. It's just a place where you eat and sleep or not even always eat. Just yeah. a place that you sleep and maybe, you know, sit on the couch and watch stuff. But um, if you're intentional about it, it can become the center of your universe and really be like a heaven on earth. Home can be a heaven on earth. I've really come to believe that in the last few years and really, I think, desire it so much as the world has become less and less familiar right. to so many of us. And and you recognize like, oh, I don't have a lot of control over what goes on outside my home, uh-huh. but I have like all the control of what goes on inside my home. Right. And I think especially in my younger years, I was really interested in what was going on out here. And as I think it's probably a natural part of the aging process. I don't know if it is, but for me, it is at least that I'm more concerned about my inner journey and about my home and right. what's going on here. And so I wanted to talk about today how we've done that, how we are continuing to to cultivate that because we're definitely not there yet. It's something that's on my mind all of the time and we're trying to make it richer and richer. It's like each season of your garden, you're getting better at it and your soil is getting, you know, More better. More fertile and yeah. all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And I wanted to talk about some of the things we've done in the past and even some of the tools that you can utilize to figure out wh- how to do that, what that means for you. Because really everybody's home, when it becomes heaven on earth, it doesn't become like everybody else's heaven on earth. It, it becomes mm, yeah. very distinct for you and for your family and right. how you can do that and kind of discover it and how to get started or just keep going. And also I hope to maybe encourage you to do it that like give you a window into what's possible um, and how, no matter how you know crazy it is out there that you can really have a very peaceful, joy filled, fulfilling life um, at right. your home. Yeah. Like you said, I think that that can look different for different people. And so And we, I think, I feel like we've, we've either talked about it with each other or we've, we started writing a little book, which we've haven't completed yet, but we talk about. Anyone wants to write our book for us, (laughs) let us know. (laughs) Anyone just wants us. It's hard to write a book. We can tell you our ideas and you can write it. Um, But we've talked about how you sort of, you can picture or it's a, it's really an exercise in kind of picturing what you would like your home life to look like. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like a so, visualization activity. Right. Um, and so if you don't know what you're going for, then then you you don't know what to do and, and kind of how to how to work towards something. So and like we said, it, it's someone's home life being rich in, in quotes is gonna be different for everyone. Um so we yeah. can kind of go through some of the things that we've kind of 
ourselves work through to to kind of give us direction. Yeah, and I, I think, I know we've talked about this on here before, but in our younger years, I think um, maybe it's holdover from being a teenager, but you're just trying to find the easiest way to get things done at home and like chores and mm. like, oh, and, and I think that's also when you're just a young parent because right. your young children require so much of your like of your time, but also just like your brain space. Yeah, and yeah. I think in part because you're still a child and you're having to give up being the child and being the parent, becoming the parent. Depending on how old you had children. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I, I, you know, I was listening to Jordan Peterson the other day and he said like, there's no better way to mature than to have children. Oh, right. Well, because you're, in, you're forced into it. You're forced into caring about something more than yourself. And so even if you don't have kids until much later in life, um, I don't know that anything requires you to forget yourself as much as a child does. I mean, they just won't take any less. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> and so it, it was, it, you know, it can be hard. And so at that phase of life, like we didn't want to have a dog. We, you know, we really struggled with anything that added chores to our plates. Right. Responsibilities. And, and even the word chore has a lot of negative connotation, connotations. Um, but as we've grown older, and I think some other um, things that I've added to that is we, you know, we were watching the program, which we've mentioned before. You guys might be like, man, you're really obsessed with that. And we are. We've watched it twice now um, called Victorian Farm. And right. it's from the BBC. And their reality shows in, in the, from the BBC are very different than American reality <laughs> shows. I can't stand American reality shows. Or I can, it's, but it's like, it's like flaming Hot Cheetos. Right. Like immediately it, when you taste one of those, your brain's like, yeah. <laughs> and then you like can't stop eating them and then you feel terrible, right? That's how American reality TV shows are with me. Like, of course, there's something very addictive yeah, about yeah. like watching horrible people do horrible things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and sure. go like, it's wow, I'm a really good person because I don't do stuff like that. But BBC has documentaries that are, and I know a lot of us are watching them. It's not very drama filled. And especially the Victorian farm is three historians. It's more like a documentary than it is reality TV. If even that, like it's just three historians who go and live in some part. They're not like forced to do things that make them uncomfortable. You know, I'm sure they still have nice quarters, living quarters at night and like oh, running yeah, water. That's true. But um, during the day, they kind of do this experiment of living as Victorians and kind of are using old cookbooks and old ways of doing things and it was what we watched in 2020 and it made uh -huh. us very happy while the world was crazy because it was like simpler times when people, you know, were, and these are people, these are middle to lower class Victorians. We're not watching like, you know, the wealthy. Right, living right, right. On this isn't like uh, Jane Austen or something like that. Yeah, it was people working the land, love the show and they did a bunch of iterations of it, but I still think that one's the best one. When we watched it, we recognized that their days were filled with chores filled with chores, things that we just work so hard to avoid, but yet their lives were so rich. So, you know, whether it was I, things that you just think say, seemed horrible, like the long process of doing laundry yeah, or of right. scrubbing the floors. I'm thinking specifically about what the women usually did because they're, they weren't strong enough to do what the men usually did. Yeah. They were separate in what they. Yeah. But I mean, they were doing lots at. of physical labor. They were milking the cows and then making, um, you know, cheese out of the milk and they were going and collecting you know s straw to make straw hats and things along those lines and their days were completely filled and then the men were mending fences and building pigsties and I yeah, mean, just planting and a million other things stuff. they were doing so many things going to the blacksmith to get horseshoes and um one of the historians commented how it was they were always busy but like it was your life it was your whole world and that really, that really hit me because we had already, as unschoolers, we're already trying to kind of build a very rich home life. But I realized how I still had some lingering fear of chores and of right, like, right. you know, labor, you know, yeah, and how their lives had so much purpose and they found so much, like the, the activities themselves were very meditative and yeah. very fulfilling. Um, and how I, I know that a lot of times we look back on people in history and we romanticize it. True. But I think more so now modern culture looks back and we feel sorry for, or we despise the past. Right. 
But um, mm-hmm. through watching that show and the other programs and just spending a lot of time thinking and reading, it was recognizing that when you had to do so many tasks during your day to just get to live. Yeah, yeah. Um, I used to see that as a sad thing, but those tasks are incredibly enjoyable. Um, another place this came from is I have a book, um, I think it's called The Art of Making, and it's about makers. That's And how the joy of making things and how so many people are going back to making things that you can easily buy for cheaper oh, than right. what you can make it for. But the joy of making is something that we've lost. Humans, to have a bowl to eat out of, you had to find the clay and shape it into a bowl and fire it. And then all this artistry and creativity would come together in that. And so everybody was making baskets. Um, everybody was making pottery or metalwork and sewing clothes, you know, darning socks, knitting, um, right. building. And it's such a part of a rich human experience. But in all of the innovating that happened, especially in the um, industrial revolution, we don't need to do that anymore. Right. And we feel so happy, produced. right? Like we feel so happy that we have a dishwasher or two dishwashers. But I totally want two dishwashers. <laughs> no, but I, I really do wonder if the activities themselves were what made a rich home life, that actually washing dishes um, is kind of a an exercise, a mm-hmm. mental and a spiritual exercise in a way that makes you happier. Right, right. We're ha- we're less happy than we've ever been in the entire history of the world, and we have no reason for it. We're healthier. Our well, children we have, usually yeah. live, and we, we have, have all this uh, abundance. Comfort. But yet, we're so unhappy. And so, I've really started to change my view of these tasks at home, and I we've started to even more intentionally build a life that requires um, tasks and chores. Yeah. And um, so. So that's uh, that's part of it for us, and I'm not. Sh- because that makes it more rich. It makes I mean, just it think about it. If you wanted to listen to music, you had to make music. Right, right. You know, that was the only time in um, Little House on the Prairie was when Paul pulled, pulled out his fiddle. Yep. If you wanted to dance, somebody had to make the music. And now we, we, we outsource our music. We outsource our creativity and artwork and all of those things. And I just, my, Andrew and I talk about it all the time that you used to live a long time ago and historically people lived in about a groups of 150 mm. and everybody found so much identity and purpose because there was probably one person in that group of 150 or a few, just a handful of people that were really good at making music right or really good at weaving baskets or really good at metal work or really good at pottery all of these things are really good at baking but now when you can get on the internet and you watch joanna Gaines, you're like oh my gosh that how does she so good at that when I'm like, ter- you know, so you, we have all this comparison and also we don't bake our own bread and we don't um, wash our own dishes. Usually we put them in the dishwasher and let it do it. Uh-huh. Um, and we don't do so many things that actually were a great expression and, and filled our time. Uh, and so we have yeah. all of this time now and we fill it with other things. We fill it with um, driving to activities, you know, and sports and we fill it with social media a right, huge right. part of where we fill our time. We fill it with listening to podcasts, too, right? <laughs> Which sure. definitely don't want to do that. No, but you could, the great thing about podcasts, and it's like <laughs> the first time in history where we can take in information while doing other things, right? So that is great. Um, so much information. I mean, you had the radio, but there's so much information that's helpful. I was just on my walk today listening to a gardening podcast and mm. just learning so much. And I'm like, this is amazing so this is the good side of it, right? This before we're on the, good side. the best gardener in your village, um, you would have known, and she, he or she would have gotten really good at it, um, growing their cabbages. Um, but now we can know one the best gardener in the country, That's and they true. have a podcast and they're sharing what they've learned. But I think that also what's happening with this podcast movement and the social media movement is we're coming back to those villages in a way because the girl I was listening today was not the best gardener in okay. the country. Yeah. But we don't live in these villages where it's really tight knit and we can go to our neighbors as much as we used to and be able to ask them about these things. Yeah. But I can hear from her. I can hear from this mother who's been gardening for 10 years and she can explain to me what she's doing right now and and we can have those sorts of experiences again. So I right. think that's pretty cool. Yeah. But all that to be said is I think that I I hope that today's podcast and this episode encourages you 
to think through um, building a life at home that you are looking forward to that requires a lot of you. Yeah, because it's not just like, um, how can I always have fun? Like, it's not about playing at home all the time because I don't think that really fills you up completely. Mm -hmm. um, we're talking about fulfilling. And like we said, even finding the joy in Task. what might be considered mundane, yeah, right? And then things we might be we might be um, trying to get out of or avoiding or outsourcing, and finding the how that can enrich your life as well. Yeah, because you, we a lot of people are struggling with their mental health, right? And you right. think like, oh my gosh, uh, why would I make my bread when I can get it so easily and I can afford mm, it? Mm -hmm. But the act of making bread m might actually you might be surprised yeah. as you're doing it that it does something for your brain. You know, we've been watching YouTube has started recommending, and maybe it's happening to you too, these like dog competitions, you know? So, okay, so we're watching YouTube. Probably because okay. we watched some like, we got recommended some like company in Northern England that brings their rat terriers oh. <laughs> to farms. And they like, when they've got rat problems and these dogs go and just like find the rats and like <laughs> grab them and shake them and kill them. Is rat terrier, and they'll or kill like they 350 rats in one day. <laughs> and these, are, I never do. I mean, rat terriers are like these little dogs, right? That I'm, I'm not a little dog person. But that day, watching that rat terrier video or whatever, I was like, oh my gosh! I'll listen to the cicadas, sound of summer in the south. Wow! But wow. um, these dogs are in heaven. They're in heaven, and they're doing the thing that they're made to do. And now we're watching these dogs that are running these courses. Um, and they're so happy to be running up these ramps and going through these tunnels and jumping over these things. And everybody knows that when a dog doesn't get to work for you or do the things that dogs are made to do, they get unhappy and mm. they do things they're not supposed to do. Right. And I, of course, it's the same way for us. Yeah. All of those things that we've been doing for thousands and thousands of years, in the last hundred years, we've just stopped. Like- for thousands of years, people were scrubbing their floors on yeah. their hands and knees. They were baking bread. They were like all of these things that you just had to do. And, and if you don't know what I mean, go watch Victorian Farm and see what humans, it really, the Victorian Farm was a little bit different because they were starting to have some, you know, inventions. Some technology, yeah, that did that. Yeah, but like really, it wasn't too different than what their people before them, 100 years before them, 500 years, 1,000 years before, really wasn't that different. And really only in the last 100 and 150 years have we had this like in industrial revolution. And now with computers, it's just like flipped our life. And so I think it's like time to, and I think a lot of people are doing this to slow down and say, wait, I can do get this thing that makes it a lot easier, but maybe easy isn't necessarily better. Right. Easier. right. That's true. And maybe like um, doing the thing that takes a little bit longer, but actually requires something of me is actually how I have a happier life, right. a richer and fuller life, a better yeah, experience maybe I'll, here. Maybe I'll feel better by doing those things. Yeah. So it's definitely worth trying. Yeah. Right? Um, and I'll also add that I remember reading, we did not do a lot of chores growing up. Um, that just wasn't how we did things. We were at school and, you know. I mean, of, you did when you were like younger. Yeah, when, you said when, when I was a kid. Okay. We didn't do a lot of chores. And I remember when I was in at university in college, hearing that um, chores are really good for kids because it makes them know that they have value in their family community. Right, that like, right. if I don't do the dishes, I'll be missed. And right. it actually increases their self-esteem. And I think sometimes we're like, oh, I don't want to get a dog, so I'm going to have to walk that dog every day. And, it, and so anything like That's that that requires something me. of us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, talk, I'm talking to you right now, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that requires something of us, often we shy away from it. It's like, why? It feels good to wake up and know that you are needed that day, that like right. you have to get these things done. Now, you can definitely, it's a lot of your mindset too, because you can be like, oh, I have so many things I have to get done. And it's, or it's like, no, this is my life. It's a practice. It's a meditative practice that I get up, right. I go check on my animals, I like turn on the sprinkler, I start the breakfast making and yep. things along those lines. And so we have sought in the last couple of years to maybe not try to systematize everything away from much work 
Now, systems are great and we have, you know, chores, charts and all sorts of things, but like maybe the harder way is the better way or the yeah. the way that requires you to be there will actually make you happier. Um, sure. I don't know if we're explaining that as well. No, but I think I think we are. I think it make it makes sense to me. I certainly I mean, makes sense certainly to me. Makes sense I'm to me. I'm... It. <laughs> um, but I think also maybe we should step back too, because we we talked we started talking about how you can figure out what a rich home life looks like for you. So I think we've gone over just kind of the basics of like maybe these some of these daily chores and those sort of things that um, are required or that maybe you're not doing are worth yeah. doing because they, they provide their own mm-hmm. sort of uh, kind of color and, and richness to your life. But in general, how do people, how have we sort of... Or how does one discover... Yeah, how do you discover what you like your home life to look like? Well, I think, first of all, humans are, though we all have our own you know, personalities and, and needs, I also think that we have share a lot in common. So I think... Looking you mean, back, uh, at, P, uh, all of us do. Okay. Yes, as a as a race, as the okay. human race, I think that if you look at traditional ways of living historically, what people did on a daily basis or weekly basis or whatever, um, I think those are going to hold true for everyone. So I think that the practice of washing your dishes um, or um, you know mowing the lawn, sort of thing, right? Um, gardening, I think is part of the human experience and just like a dog that's you know working for its master or herding sheep or whatever is very happy i think there are just some tasks that make humans happy and i think at the top of the list is creation okay um and i do think that washing the dishes is a type of creation we Mm. like to bring order to chaos right it it does something to the human brain and so if you come to the dishes like a victim (laughs) which i have done I, and our kids do pretty often. I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> in as it, you know, my old mindset was like, oh, like how many dishes in this sink? And the the new mindset is, that, you know, that I'm going to bring order to this chaos, and it's going to be very, yeah. it's going to be enjoyable, and my hands are going to be in warm water, and I'm going to be able to scrub things, and it probably actually won't take that long, anyways. Yeah. Um, and I will just take it as a a time to relax and to think. Um. I think somebody who does this really well is Rajiv. I think I talked about him on a recent podcast. I don't know uh, how to yeah, say Rajiv's did. last name. He's got, a, he works for HGTV Handmade and he makes great YouTube videos where he just like celebrates, you know, all sorts of handicrafts. And he even has one on washing the dishes, which I have not watched yet. And making the bed. Oh, that one I did watch. That was really good. So yeah. he has from creation to sort of mundane tasks that you take pride in and you like really try to do well. I guess so it's in a way like Martha Stewart because Martha's like that, Yeah. but maybe not quite as posh as Martha, even though (laughs) he is still like has very fine things. um, Uh There's maybe just a little bit less of that posh attitude. But um, so I think that's a good place to start is through looking back at traditional ways of doing things. and asking yourself if you can do some of those. Right. Um, but then I think there's some diversity after that. Because maybe some of you have already thought this. Not everybody baked, baked bread 150 years ago. There was often a baker in town. You might have sure. baked your yeah. own bread. Um, you, had, you had like specialists or whatever. Yeah. And who... so some of you would hate baking bread and your brain just doesn't work that way. Um, and some of you or some of us um, would love it. And so I think that is where you start to ask yourself or visualize in a way okay. what a rich home life looks to you. And we've done this exercise right. and I think what it involves is being in a good mood. <laughs> you want to start off in a okay, good mood. Yeah, that, that, and, that, and that can take some work. Yeah. It's not like a, where you need what, like this isn't like a, well, if just my husband would do this or if my kids would act more like this, that's not that kind of activity we're describing. It's more like if you could be transported into the perfect like heaven on earth home experience right get into that mindset and then you ask yourself what does it look like in this home and it's not it doesn't have to be your home because maybe that's it's too heavy because then you're just going to feel immediate guilt like well i don't have that but like if you were to walk into what you would see as just like this heavenly home what does it look like Mm. um are there shelves full of books right are there, is there art on the wall? Is there, is there art? Or... What kind of art is on the wall? What kind of space is it? What does the furniture look like? 
Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And then what does it sound like? Is there music playing? Is there somebody playing an instrument? Um, do you hear, you know, different activities going on? And, and I mean, get really detailed with this. Do you hear people, do you hear a lot of sounds? Is it very quiet? Do you hear birds? Do you hear, you know- um, You hear cicadas. Yeah, <laughs> cicadas, the cutting, hearing. scissors cutting, or, you know, people practicing or nailing, you know, like we've got oh. um, Asher who loves- Blacksmithing. Blacksmithing. So definitely part of my heaven on earth is to hear. I love hearing him not too close, <laughs> but I do love hearing him hammering away. I just, it makes me feel happy that he's out there creating. Or we hear Pearl, Pearl on the, the flute. flute. Like That's it, right. maybe you hear musical instruments. It's yeah, anything. And what does it smell like? Is it that you, you know, when you walk through the front door of this heaven on earth, there's this smell of fragrant flowers. Does it smell like, you know, soup cooking or bread baking or does it, smell like, um, you know, crafts being made, but sometimes our home will smell, have a kind of strange smell, but I, it's because Pearl is making her clay earrings. Right. Oh yeah, know, that's true. In the oven. But so like, think about what it smells like, go through the five senses. Um, what other senses do we have? Where are we at? We've done, smell. what does it look what like? Taste. Oh yeah. Have that. Yeah. Like what kind of foods are you eating? Like what does the wall taste like? Because you also you can totally get into a rut and I do believe that food is part of a rich life experience. And so what kind of foods are we talking about? Is it just, I mean, obviously I don't think it's a rich experience if you're just opening prepackaged foods and eating them or even a rich experience if you're terrified of, you know, rich foods. And so you don't ever want to eat those either. I think that um, tasty nourishing foods is, is such an important part of a happy life. And so I do think I'm going to go out on a limb here. Okay. And tell you that like, while not everybody is a baker, I think everybody should become a cook. It's just- That is going out on a limb. It is going, I do. I think Careful. that like, I think that, if, yeah, we I'm like cook. tripping over my words, but- We should learn to cook. Yeah, we should learn to cook. To some extent. Yeah, so that at home you can eat really good food. And I do think it's possible to get to the point where you can be such a good cook that there are very few restaurants that can beat what you eat at home. Oh, yeah. I remember a friend of You've ours saying that. There. Well, I feel like I have. I mean, yeah, it obviously it's what we like. Of all the, if I think back to how what we how we ate earlier in our marriage versus now, it's pretty different. Very different. Um, another sound that we left out was the sound of hammering and things being built. I thought you just said that. Oh, with Asher, you said no. It, but... Yeah, but I was thinking about you because if we're oh. talking about how I've learned to cook, uh-huh. um, in. 2020. Did we mention this before? We, I don't know if we did. Our 20th wedding anniversary is in 2020. We were married in 2000. So it makes it really easy to remember which anniversary yeah, it is for both of us. Thank goodness for me. <laughs> thank goodness for both of us. Makes it easy. Yeah. But um, we were really excited. I think we were hoping to either go to France or to Italy yeah. and tour around. Yep. And um, then once 2020 started, we realized we would not be going anywhere. And but we want to do something. It's our 20th wedding anniversary. And so yeah. we thought, well, we've always talked about getting tools because we didn't have any. We had like screwdrivers and a drill, but we didn't have anything beyond that. And so we spent a pr- fairly good chunk of money. Yeah. Like a couple well, grand or something. Yeah, was, Might as well say. I mean, rich home life, a right? money. <laughs> Gangsta. I mean, no more than we, much less than we would have spent if we'd gone on yeah, a trip. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, and bought... I don't even know what we bought. What did a we buy, Mike? A table saw, a miter saw, uh, built a, like all the lumber to build like the workbenches, and I got a, like a an actual router. You know, like not a router for your Wi-Fi, but a wood <laughs> router. Um, and, and you've added just, to it since then. Yeah, nail and then, gun and yeah, nail gun now, and like just lots of stuff, compressor, lots of things that uh, you can use for making stuff or which, fixing stuff whatever. which was a little stressful for you at first because you didn't know how to use it no i didn't and i was but i was excited about it too so it was that was it was an exciting time to kind of be getting into that and so now that has added so much to our rich home life because you were able to build us um the chicken coop the rabbit hutches the garden boxes um i think you've even built you've built like shelving, shelving and and things in for our home, um, display. We did that things. whole like fireplace thing, oh, you yeah, know, the, the built ins. So, and I don't so know, lots of stuff. Yeah. And I think that maybe is a good time to transition into how you 
even if you don't know how to do any of these things right now, we promise you that you can learn. Like humans are pretty good at doing things. And you can <laughs> learn how to do things that seem very complex or opaque to you right now. Yeah. Um, 2020 was also the year where I learned how to paint furniture. Oh, that's true. That was a big one. And I did not know how to paint furniture before that. I had painted a few things. In fact, in 2019, we got a trailer and we redid it in there. Like and, an RV trailer. Yeah. And we re, re took, took everything out and redid it. We would totally do it differently now because yeah. we had almost no skill. We had, we were willing, but we, <laughs> I remember we had a friend come visit a, f a few months later and he was a, a professional painter uh -huh. and we had painted all of the woodwork in there, like the furniture that's like built in with latex. Yeah. And cause I think I said something about it feeling sticky. He's like, well, yeah, you really shouldn't use latex. And that hadn't latex even crossed my mind. I thought yeah. like knowing that there's different kinds of paint, like that <laughs> sounds complicated, yeah. you know? And I remember hearing about like chalk paint and then how you're supposed to use this wax. And I remember asking my sister on the phone, I'm like, what, how do you put the wax on? Like, I didn't understand <laughs> at all. Like that seems so what complicated. And now it is so easy for me to um, paint furniture, which is not like a super complex thing. It's not like building the pyramids or anything, but humans build pyramids too. No, um, aliens did that, sweetheart. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> but so like, I, but it's like, it seemed so complicated to me and it's given me a lot of confidence um, to apply to other things that amongst other things that used to seem so hard and now seem so second nature. Right. Like you don't even really have to think too much about them. And so then I had to keep that in mind as we worked on the garden or when we got rabbits um, that like we started not knowing anything, but we figured it out. Uh huh. And, and you're still kind of figuring it out. Yeah. But, and you will always be. But that's, isn't that also part of the rich home life we're talking about is learning and yes. working on things? Growing. I mean, yeah, that's, it's a grow, that's a, that's sort of an area of growth to be in. If you're not learning something, then you're certainly stagnant, you know? Yeah. And we also, and maybe this is part of it, um, or maybe this is born from, we don't do that as much as we used to. I mean, it used to be that your grandmother, was so amazing at like lace because she had made lace her whole life uh -huh. that she could make lace like nobody's business way better than you at 21. But we don't do that anymore. And so we are like, as we've lost a lot of these skills as we've outsourced things and made things easier, we don't value age and wisdom like we used to. Right. Right. We, we like worship youth. Uh -huh. Um, and, all and we feel bad when we're getting old and we feel embarrassed of our age when i do think if you cultivate a we rich have a home whole episode life about that by the way yeah if you cultivate a rich home life and you are constantly learning and growing you'll be so cool when you get old because think of all of the things that you will know how to do and i so when i do start to get a little bit like nervous about getting old i think about being an older woman who has so much wisdom who yeah. like, I think about, I visualize myself in my garden and I know so much and I'm helping a younger woman. I'm answering her questions about her garden and, um, or I'm answering her questions about, you know, bread making. And because that's another thing that like, I did not know how to make bread before. It was like, every time I'd make bread, it would turn out terribly. And I yeah. didn't know why. And now bread is so easy for me. And people are just like, wow, like it's some magical thing I'm doing. <laughs> and it's like, no, it's actually... If you just spend a little time, you know, you'll get to make magic. Or take one bread class. That yeah, I did take a really bread class. Yeah. Right? And, and so a I huge think difference. once you have spent some time thinking about what heaven on earth looks like to you. And remember, this is not like he heaven on earth to me is I'm on a beach somewhere. It's like, no, 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 no. This is your home. Yeah, you're, yeah, more your day to day heaven on earth. Yeah. And so, like, I think often when we try to think of our perfect life, we try to make our home a vacation. Like, I'm right. living on the beach. And it's like, well, maybe, maybe. But that's because we've forgotten about like the richness of home life and all we look forward to is vacations. Yeah. But instead, our, we're thinking like, you know, what are you doing at home? What are you learning? Maybe you're working on a sketchbook or all of those things. So once you visualize what heaven on earth means for you, like on a Tuesday, what you're yeah. doing at home, yep. not on a holiday, but on a Tuesday, um, all of the your different senses in this perfect home, then you need to start, I think you need to write it down. Right, right. 
because you can have these great conversations and you're feeling really good and these great visualizations and then you just forget and you get back on your phone and you're looking at reels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that all goes out the window. Yeah, and so- Or you come up with an excuse not to. Yeah, or you just, I think a lot of the times you just forget. And so I think it's important to make a list of those things and you can put them up on your wall. If I, I'm a person who likes things physically, but some people right. can put it in their phone or a reminder on their phone. Um, you can make a vision board. Um, we are we are believers in vision boards. Mm, yeah. Meaning, so if you decided that your home would be full of books, um, go find a photo of a room with a bunch of books in it on Google Images and print it out and put it on a poster board along with other images of that perfect home and put it, you know, in your closet or somewhere you, where you'll see it um, and can, you know, look at it maybe in your bathroom and remind you of how you want to spend your time. Yeah. It could be magical. Like some people believe that vision boards work because then it just starts, the universe starts attracting it to you. But I think it's, I think you're magical. And when you're reminded of what you really want to do with your time and what you really value Maybe instead of turning to your phone to look at funny, like, fail videos, which that's important. That's on my that, dream board. That's a worthwhile activity, <laughs> in my opinion. Fail videos, a home with fail videos playing <laughs> is on my dream board. No. Um, then you will actually say, like, oh, maybe I should go Google this thing or I should get started on this thing. Yeah. And so I think then you just need to get started. <laughs> that's the hardest part. But I, I, that's in part why I quit social media this year. Um, it's been so hard because I like social media. Well, yeah, you like, I mean, it's fun. Connection. It's, it's also fun. entertaining. It's, it's a lot of information to take yeah. in. And so yeah. I haven't been perfect. I'll be like, oh, well, I just need to go. I, you know, I wanted to see this one thing. And so I'll go on there and like through my like back channels, cause I don't have it on my phone. I'm sure we all have deleted social media and know how that goes, but I've been on it a, a hundredth. Or, oh, totally. you know, of what I used to be on it or less, maybe yeah. a thousandth. Um, and what I found is this is the year I got a lot better at gardening. And I'm like, you know mm. what? Maybe that's actually because I wasn't on social media because like yeah. I, did, I didn't have anything to do. I needed to do stuff and I didn't keep getting lost. Yeah. Or like I intend to do the thing, but I keep getting like social media is like that, man. Like it's so addictive for all of us and it can get in the way of you actually accomplishing things. Yeah. Sucks away your time. Yeah, I have a friend who quit social media this year, and she's been way better than me at, like, she's totally off of it. And she has learned so many things, and her home life has become so rich to her, and it's very impressive. And so yeah. that there are some pitfalls to things like that. And so I, I think you should, I mean, I'm saying, if you want to build a rich home life, the, not only do you have to intentionally start adding things to your home, like, okay, I've always said I wanted to do this, I'm going to do it. Right. And I think that another thing, I'm kind of jumping around here, but I thought of it like if what if what you like in your home is the sound of an instrument being played, it might be tempting to say, like, so I'm gonna make my kids play an instrument. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and I do love hearing my kids play instruments, but I think um that it doesn't make your home experience really great if you're just having to yell at your kids to play an instrument. Yeah, it's not going to be that dreamy thing you were hoping it would be. Yeah, and then you'll be frustrated and you'll be frustrated because you don't even like yourself because you're like, man, I'm just always yelling at my kids. <laughs> um, I think instead, this has to be something that you take personally upon yourself um, as, you know, if it's you're doing it as a couple or as an individual uh, or as a family. But like, if you want to hear the sound of music being played, maybe it's time for you to learn how to play an instrument. I do yeah. not think you get too old for that. I mm. don't. Um, and so, especially if you can learn how to listen to a podcast, which you are listening to right now, you can probably learn how to play an instrument. That's true. Um, and so, <laughs> so then start by doing those things. And so with bread making, I took one class and that was all it took. Well, just to push you in the right direction, right? Yeah. Just to solve some of the, the major pitfalls, I was, uh, major errors I was making. And then it was like, oh, and then the rest I could figure out though. So I didn't have to go take a course again. I don't want you to think your life's going to be filled with courses though. That could be. I mean, there's worse ways to live your life. Um, but like you can just get a little bit of help, outside help, and then humans are smart. You can figure it out. And that's another thing I've really discovered kind of in a roundabout way it, through going to thrift stores. Um, when I first started thrifting and looking for like things of value, I would find a painting that was pretty good and it was an original. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, this must be a famous painter. And I would just go and like try to look it up. And I very 
very rare occasions would find that it was a known painter. Right. The rest of the time, it was a nobody. And I started to learn that nobodies paint pretty pictures too. Oh, right. Yeah. And that Doing like the, humans, uh, famous. humans make stuff and we make good stuff. Yeah. Like, and it, you don't have to then go and sell it and you don't have to become famous for it or, you know, take a picture of it and put it on social media. Um, there's humans are good at making stuff. And so you don't have to feel like I don't, I'm not an artist. It's like, we're all artists yeah. and we're all creators and we're all builders and we're all to some degree, um, we're just good at making stuff. And so, yes, Mike's better at woodwork than I am because right. I hate following directions and I would get my <laughs> hand cut off and paying attention. Yeah. Um, dangerous, but, but that being said, I used to always say you're a better baker, but through self growth, not what's the word control, self control, or self, -mastery? Uh, self mastery to uh, not complete self mastery, but a little bit of self mastery. I've learned to become a better baker, to follow the rules and to recognize I need to slow down and think about what I'm doing. Cause cooking's a lot easier for me where I can just like That's true. You can throw some spices a little bit in more and, yeah. that way. So, um, so, yeah, I think a, a big thing is having a vision of what it is you want. And that's either a vision board or writing down the, the words of, the, of kind of how you want this to look or, or feel like. But then I, I think also what you said was you don't, you don't have to do that and then force your family to, um, to like adhere to this. Mm -hmm. um, you just start doing the things. And it's funny how your kids, if we're talking about children or, and even a spouse, will kind of follow and start doing things themselves as well, right? Because mm -hmm. we, we if we see it happening, we're then like, oh, that's interesting. Maybe I should do something um, myself. It doesn't have to be coercive or anything like that. You just you just set the example, and we and we've talked about that as far as homeschooling goes, and, and kind of how our, our how we do that. Um, but just showing that um, makes other people want to participate in their own way. Yeah, and I think also as I'm, what I've tried to do in creating a physical, I, I do feel like as a woman, that we have gifts of homemaking. Yeah. I do think we um, are a little bit better at it typically than men. And um, and so I have tried to create an actual physical space um, where my family wants to be. So it's it looks a certain way. It's, okay. and it, it's pretty. But also I filled it with books. And um, I've done that through the thrift store, so it hasn't been expensive. Yeah. Um, I filled it with art. I filled it with supplies for things. And then as, like you've said, as I've baked, they want to bake with me. Sure. And I cook, they want to cook with me. And I've watched them, what I'm doing is I'm modeling what adult life looks like to them. Right. And what home life looks to them. They've never known. They've never been alive before. And so they have started to go, oh, okay, well, I get to make things too. Yeah. And so then they start making and doing and creating. And it's been so rewarding to have my children grow into teenagers. And I know a lot of people talk about like, oh, the teens are so hard, but I have just found the opposite to be true that it's like, it's so, so rewarding to watch them start to create on their own and be amazed at the things they're creating and the doing and the thoughts that they're having. And yeah, I mean, yeah, my kids, all of them, as when they hit their teen years, have skills and talents that are so much more developed in areas that I'm not good at at all. Yeah. And it's really cool. It's really cool because yeah. then they can teach me and I can ask questions of them and their thoughts on this or can you make this for me or can you help me with this? And it's pretty it's pretty rad. Well, their individual personalities kind of come out because everybody, no one is the same. So they get to do their thing. Mm -hmm. That is their own sort of uh, genius, which we also talked about in a previous home, yeah. homeschooling podcast. So I think it all kind of comes together and it's, and it, once you have that, it creates a positive environment in your home and there's just more generally a good feeling mm. in the home, yeah. Um, which is part of that rich uh, home life. Yeah. Um, and when, one more thing I'll add is that I think you also want to be really careful with the media that you bring into your home. Oh, yeah. Um, I think that maybe, maybe all some of you are already aware of this, but you have to be really intentional with the music that you're listening to the shows that you're watching that um, they're bringing that rich healthy uplifting peaceful vibe into your house um i would or spirit into your house like right. what does it 
what is it celebrating on this show? Um, we talked about uh, American reality shows. I, I would say those make you feel <laughs> yucky and they're, they're making fun of people and they're, you know, maybe not. I think we think, oh, it's just whatever. But you're bringing that into your home. And, yeah. and I often will think of like the television as like a doorway into my house. And whatever I'm watching is flowing into my house. Yeah. And, and it is affecting everybody in the house. We're like, we're, we're swimming in it afterwards. And so if it's like Victorian farm where it's people working hard and learning, then we're all inspired to work hard and learn afterwards. But there are some things that I just think you should be really careful and evaluate like, oh, it's violent. And it's like, well, why would we just open a little conduit? Oh, you mean when you say that's just violence? Yeah. And then there's just like violence is coming into our house. Like, man, the world is violent enough. Why would we (laughs) choose that for our entertainment and flowing into our house? Or it's materialistic. It's all about just, it just, it's, or it's just like, I don't know. I think that. Base or kind of rough. Yeah. Um, And so be careful about what you're watching um, and what you're celebrating even if you're like, oh, it's just for fun. I think um, you should seek after things that are lovely and happy and peaceful and joyous and loving, <laughs> right? Um, and I promise if you do, or what I promise that whatever you're bringing in through media is affecting you. Sure. And that you will find as you choose uplifting media when it's not on, it's still affecting you and you are happier in your home. Um, And and another thing that I think is a part of that is, um, I think it was Albert Einstein talked about like how people are inspired by heroes and like the perfect school would just teach people about the great men and women in history. And then the students would just be naturally inclined to go and do great things. Mm. Um, And so when, you are turning on media in your home, whether it's the lyrics of the music you're listening to or the things you're reading or watching, you're teaching your family and yourself, those are your heroes and you are a student of them. Right. And it is affecting you. And so it's such a powerful shift that you can make if you make it really good stuff, really good stuff. Yeah, uplifting. And, and you may already know that. And I think, um, you know, I we all get stuck where you're like, ah, that video didn't make me feel very good. Where you like, you know, top 10 fails or whatever. And you're like, Oh, now that does make me feel pretty good. (laughs) You're like, I just watch yourself. Like, yeah, I can watch one thing and feel really good afterwards and feel really happy. But when I watch that or I listen to that or I read that, like, I don't feel very happy. And yeah. Um, so that's all part of that being intentional as far as your home and what you're celebrating and what you're a student of. Yeah. We don't know if it's going to get any better in the outside world and whether that's something you can really trust. So I think that's a that's a big part of our motivation for us doing this ourselves is that like we talked about before, it's a it's an environment that you can control. And if you're not controlling it, you can take control back mm-hmm. and you can really, really kind of create that space that is safe and which is uplifting and, and rich, like we talked about, um, because... The outside world, who knows where that's going? Yeah. And it does affect us in some ways, but in a lot of ways we can we can we can keep this space um it separate from that. Yeah, and like Barbara Bush said, it matters less what happens in the White House and more what happens in your house. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so. I think that's a that is a, a huge reason to if you're not already, and maybe you are, but it's just another kind of reminder or cheering you on to do uh to keep going. Um, but to to create that rich home life, which um, so everybody can be happy, obviously not all the time. You know, we're all people. It's okay. Well, part but of a in general, fulfilling life is, I mean, sadness is part of life, <laughs> and we learn from it and we grow from it. And- right. So it's not like we're saying that it's just a uh, happy all the time place, but it's definitely a positive place. Yeah. And uh, so. And I mean, that's what we're working on all the time. Right. In our house, and we're. Um, it, no, you'll never be perfect at it. So don't worry if you're perfect at it now. Um, well, that's part of that's part of the process. Yeah. And that's, that's actually that's the, the joy beauty of it. Of it. Yeah. Um, just like learning is part of the process. So it's, it's great that we can do that. So I encourage you to see what you can do to kind of improve it or, or start creating a, a more rich home life in your home. Yeah. Thanks for coming along, it. guys. Yeah. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you again yeah. next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.